The node reference samples are a collection of over 140 shader graph files. Each file represents one of the nodes available in shader graph. Unlike most shader graph files, these are not intended to be used as shaders. Instead, you can think of these as visual reference to learn more about each of the nodes in shader graph. Think of it as an extension to the shader graph documentation. Each file contains the node itself with a short description of what the node does. Many files also contain a breakdown of what the node is doing inside in a section called under the hood. And some files also contain examples of how the node can be used. The files also contain helpful sticky notes with explanations and tips. Let's take a look at a couple of ways you can use these samples. If you see a node in the searcher and you're unsure what it does just based on the name, you can find the sample for it and use the sample to learn more about it. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here in the searcher, under math, we have a node called reciprocal. Well, what does this node do exactly? Let's find the sample. So we'll go to the math folder and scroll down to the reciprocal node. So here we can read about it. It says the reciprocal node divides one by the input value. And here we can see that we just have a divide node. We have an input value of one. And then our input here in is represented by this float here. So we can see that all it's doing is one divided by your input. That's pretty simple. And we just learned what a reciprocal does. Let's take a look at another example. Also in the math section, under derivative, we have this node called DDX. So here, if we come into our samples inside the math folder, we can find the DDX node file. We open it up and well, this one's a little bit more complicated, but let, let's read about it. The DDX node allows you to find the difference between data in the current pixel and the data in the next pixel over to the right in screen space. And it's there's a nice note here that says it only works in the fragment stage. And then we have a couple of examples of how we can use the DDX and DDY nodes to create some interesting effects. So this one generates face normals. And this one is used to manually create UV derivatives uh, for when we have uh, specific cases with texture seams. So we've taken a look at two examples of how we can learn what a specific node in the searcher does. And the nice thing about these is that they're visual. So I can see exactly what's happening and how to construct each of these examples. Another way to use the node samples is to find inspiration. If you're looking for something specific that you want to do in a shader, or you're just browsing the files, you can get inspiration for something to use in a future shader that you're working on. So for example, here is the time nodes uh, sample file. And we can see that there are lots of examples in here for how to scroll a texture how to make uh, time loops, and how to make time waves. Uh, there's even something more interesting <laughs> if you want to create this uh, crazy psychedelic checkerboard pattern. And the time node, for example, has uh, many, many examples of what you can do with it. Uh, here's the screen position node, and here's a way to create sparkling snow uh, using screen position. Here's several different ways of creating screen masks uh, using the screen position node. Uh, you can create a, a mask using the center distance method, using a rounded edges method, and using a square type. And then here is the node, or here's the sample that talks about the UV coordinates. And there are lots of examples here for how to create scrolling UVs, uh, how to scale UVs, how to make our scrolling animated, and then also an example of how to do per pixel UV distortion. So anytime you're looking for inspiration for your next shader project, just open up a couple of the samples and look at examples of how to do 
all kinds of different shader effects. More advanced users will be able to use the node reference samples to generate variations of the node. Let me show you what I mean. So here is the rounded polygon node, and there's a nice description here of what the node is doing. But there's also a section here called under the hood that rebuilds what the node is doing internally in shader graph nodes. Now, if you want to create a variation of this node, let's say you really like how it works, but you'd like to create a version of it that generates a signed distance field of a rounded polygon instead of just the shape itself. You could come into this rounded polygon node and copy all of these nodes in the under the hood section and recreate your own subgraph node. Now let's come over here to this lerp node here. So here, this saturate node has the final output of the rounded polygon node. But if we look at the preview for this lerp, we can see that at this stage, what we have is a signed distance field. So if you wanted to create your own variation, you could copy these nodes into a subgraph and output the result of this lerp here as a signed distance field instead of the result that the built-in node is giving. So you can create uh, your own versions of the built-in shader graph nodes using this section called under the hood as a start, and then make your own custom modifications to make the node do exactly what you'd like it to do. Now let's take a look at how to add the node reference samples to your project. First, either open an existing Unity project or create a new one. The node reference samples are available in the latest version of 2021 LTS, 2022 LTS, or 2023.3. So make sure you're using the latest version of the editor for your project. Next, open the Package Manager by clicking the Windows menu and selecting Package Manager. Inside the Package Manager, Select the Shader Graph package. Now, switch to the Samples tab. There are two sample sets available. We want to add the one called Node Reference. Click the Import button to the right of the Node Reference sample. Unity will download the samples and add them to your project. Now you can open the Samples folder and find the new samples inside. Notice that the samples are sorted into folders based on the category they're in in Shader Graph in the searcher. So for example, if I'm looking for the dot product node, I can find that one in the math folder and there's the dot product example. And if I'm looking for the sample texture 2D node, that one's in the input folder under sample texture 2D. We hope you enjoy this new set of samples. Share your thoughts and comments with us in the ShaderGraph forum.